beginning of 1980, um, this thing, this movement started to develop in New York City that I had become, you know, loosely aware of because of my friendship with, uh, with, with Blondie, with uh, Debbie and Chris. And they said, hey, now you got to come up to a hip hop with me, which is what they called it. They said, a hip hop. And you and, and when you went to a hip hop, you'd go to some space, either it was a playground or a school gymnasium or some uh, bowling alley or some space that wasn't really generating lots of money. And a bunch of kids would take it over with boom boxes and um, or sometimes they'd even have a proper mobile DJ and they would play primarily one song, Good Times. Good times. And they would play the break to my song, Good Times, and they would just rap and rap and rap for hours and hours and hours. And I had never seen anything like that. I mean, you could, I, I literally, I mean, the first time I saw it, they took me to a club, they took me to a high school in Queens, and then they took me to a spot in the Bronx. And all they played was one song, just over and over again. And it was just the breakdown to good time. They would just go, good, 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 good time. Boom, boom. I remember meeting, uh, guy named Fab Five Freddy and uh, we were playing a show with Blondie and this was only maybe a few weeks after I had first seen somebody do that uh, and we were playing a show and it was The Clash, Blondie and Chic and we were playing at this place in New York called Bonds and we got to the middle of Good Times and Fab Five Freddy just ran up on the stage and the next thing you know, Futura 2000 ran up on the stage. And next thing you know, there were all these guys up there rapping. And they were just sort of freestyling and looking at the people in the crowd going crazy. And at the time, I didn't know that it was going to become a big phenomenon. It just felt like uh, poets, you know, riffing and, and, you know, and doing what they did the same way if I jumped on stage with Prince and started playing guitar. These guys jumped on stage with their beats. and I mean, not with their beats, but with their rhymes and... And, and, and their and their style and their stories and their pro, and their powers of improvisation, and when we laid down that groove, they just started going crazy. A few months later, I went to this club called Leviticus, which is a very popular uh, black urban profession, what we used to call a buppy club uh, back in the day. And um, I'm out on the dance floor, and then all of a sudden, I hear do do do. I said the hip hop, the hip hop, the the hip hip hop, you don't stop the rocket to the bang bang boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. And he says, Yeah, I just bought this record up in Harlem. It's called Rappers of Light. I said, What do you mean you bought the record? That's my song. And then I heard the strings from my record go, Ew! which is an exact sample before they had sampling. So that means that they took my record into the studio and either scratched it or they put it on a piece of tape and played it on top of their master. So um, big copyright infringement, you know, our music to us was sacred. Like I certainly didn't mind somebody jamming with us on stage live, but to record it and not put our names on it and then make a lot of money. And I think that the record was so big, it might up being even bigger than good times. At least it was more exciting because it felt like a new art form. So um, anyway, uh, we threatened a lawsuit. Everything wound up being great. Our names were added to the copyright. So if you look at a copy of Rapper's Delight, you know, it says right there that I'm the co-writer.